Hey everyone, Michelle Seidling here with another episode of Food Experience Unplugged. Today we are talking about regenerative food systems and how understanding the story behind the food can help you make better food choices for healthier eating, whether you're on the go or at home. Today we're talking with Logan Call, a regenerative foods chef and the founder of Planted Cuisine in Michigan. Logan Call, welcome to Food Experience Unplugged. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Well, we're so excited to hear about regenerative food and how, what's the story behind the food? That's um, what really interested me was your, your work in understanding what goes behind the food that you're eating and, and how that kind of helps to play, come to play in, in making healthy food choices. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that. I could talk about it all day, so I'm happy to do it. <laughs> Great. Um, well, let's see, just to kind of start out with, how did you get involved in, in this whole with food and regenerative and, and everything? Um, yeah, so it's, it's, been a, it's been a lifelong journey. Um, I grew up uh, in upstate New York. My mom has been at the forefront of healthy food and, and, and living um, for a long time. She was a macrobiotic chef back in her day. She had a cafe with her sister. And so growing up, we had five acres in upstate New York. She had 18 different gardens, um, medicinal herbs, edible flowers, um, things that chefs are kind of just picking up on now. She was doing 20 years ago. Um, so this was like the foundation, the upbringing that I had. And so it was, it was incredible. I, I grew up scratch cooking. Um, we ate primarily vegetarian. Everything as much as possible is coming from our land. So I had a real understanding for natural flavors and how to work with what nature provides and not having to input a lot of other things into it. So safe to say, I, considering where I am now, I had the optimal uh, upbringing um, provided by my mom. And uh, but I, food has not always been what I've done professionally. Um, I was in media, sports broadcasting specifically, for the first five or six years of, of my professional life uh, before going back to school uh, at UCLA. And that's when I made this switch over from, from media and broadcasting over to food. Um, and that was primarily just because I've always wanted to make a difference. I've always had a real strong passion and desire for making a difference. And it was a real struggle to do it in media. And I was looking for a different path. That's why I went to UCLA. And it was there I learned about systems thinking. And it, it was also at, during this time that I was transitioning from kind of my rebellious food stage of eating a standard American diet. Um, back to uh, plant-based. And so I was really taking a hard look at our agriculture and food industries and really understanding that it, it is such a massive system and that food is at the basis of health and wellness, both for humans, but the environment as well. And I just realized that if I wanted to make the greatest difference possible, food was probably the best because it really touches everything um, within within our lives within our country and world so that's kind of just a brief so then i after um being at ucla and going through their sustainability program i made that switch over and launched planted cuisine shortly after that okay wow so that's quite a quite a journey so yes. but um just kind of thinking about with the early days you know on the farm with your mom and um what are your what are your earliest memories of whether it's cooking with your mom or just kind of interacting with with the food or or other things yeah it's it's interesting because I think as a kid a lot of a lot of w what that life revolved around was chores um, you know taking sure. care of the gardens weeding um, laboriously like picking edible flowers for her to use and certain things so <laughs> There's like, it's a, a mixed bag of, of memories. Uh, but it was, you know, especially now, of course, looking back, it's, you know, to be able to have had that upbringing and working in the garden, uh, trying different foods, and I think being surrounded by nature 
was really, I mean, my brother and I just, we just were on the property outside all day, every day compared to, you know, most of our youth these days in terms of the lives that they lead with technology, we had the opposite and um, interacting with nature and those experiences. So, um, you know, it was still during the time where we could be gone for most of the day. And I mean, my mom was a single mom, so it wasn't like she had the ability to pay attention, like to where we all were constantly. Mm -hmm. So that freedom to explore and um, just interact with nature and um, from berry picking to harvesting potatoes. Um, there was actually a point in time where I did a dinner um, based off of a childhood memory of harvesting potatoes. So it's definitely had a big impact on me. And then in the kitchen itself, yeah, I definitely have lots of memories of just uh, getting to, to cook with my mom and, you know, food was, so at this point in, in where I am with Planted Cuisine, I've boiled it down to making food a priority in our lives once again, our number one priority and getting people excited about food and, and, and seeing the fun in it. And I think that really comes from growing up. Food was always the most important thing on my mom's side of the family. Um, our, our vacations and everything were always, always centered around coming together in the kitchen and cooking together and, um, whether it was Thanksgiving, Christmas, or just a normal day, um, food always took a big part, big chunk out of, uh, out of our, our time together. You know, it wasn't uncommon for us to spend two to three hours in the kitchen. Um, and you know, that that's kind of now at this point where I'm trying to get other people to, to, to arrive at that conclusion that that is worthy of, of your time. So, um, yeah, those memories have certainly had a, a real impact and it's still the same with with our family today i mean when we get together food is always the the centerpiece of kind of what we're what we're up to sure sure did, did your brother uh catch on to the food uh interest as well you know no not really um we have some great memories of him trying to but he <laughs> um i think it has had a real impact on him um he has started to recently cook more himself, um, but it was always just something that I just took took on. So there wasn't probably a lot of room for him to explore as much. But uh, it's 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 still core to who he is. As, again, everybody in our family were just all very tied to food and and see the importance of it. So um, yeah, he he was usually he was usually playing with Legos while I was cooking, but. Um, <laughs> I, I really, I really took a, a, I had a real deep connection. I, I did a, I had a dog biscuit baking business when I was 13. That was safe to say like my first, uh, first <laughs> quote unquote job. So um, yeah, I was always in the kitchen. So you work a lot with what's called regenerative food systems. Will you tell us a little bit about that, what it means and, and what it means to, for people as they're, as they're cooking and eating? Yeah, absolutely. So um, really, so food systems, we, we have our food system in this country. Regenerative is the key here, the, the difference. Um, and what regenerative is, is it's a philosophy really based around farming, which I have kind of taken and applied to our food system as a whole. So we have, um, you know, organic farming, um, and regenerative is really a step above that. It's, it's similar to biodynamic farming. And so what regenerative farming is, is it's focused on soil health. Um, so the key to nutrient dense food, to food that really allows us to thrive is the health of the soil that the food was grown in. So, um, so regenerative farming being that the soil health is of, utmost priority to the farmer um, and so soil should be super nutrient dense and unfortunately because of industrial farming practices our soil has been degraded um, and really the health of the soil can be traced to issues across the world whether it's um, you know basically how humans have treated um, you know when we kind of first agriculture first arrived on the scene our world was covered in beautiful topsoil, um, the best farming you can imagine. And 
we've kind of just moved around um, and, you know, we farm it until the soil is so degraded that you literally can't farm there anymore. Then we move on to the next thing. And I mean, that's part of like some of the issues we've seen in the Middle East with wars is a lot of it starts to do with famine and just not being able to grow food. Um, we saw it this past year in the Midwest with flooding. Um, it wasn't just because of soil health, but the, 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 the poor soil doesn't retain water. Um, that's part of the issue with degraded soil. So um, soil health, um, is farming practices, so crop rotations, um, uh, doing cover crops, basically making sure that um, if you, so like if you grow carrots, it'll take a certain nutrients out of the soil, but then you can plant a cover crop of say lentils and it will actually inject the soil with those nutrients that the carrots took out. And so you leave that ground, the, the soil sit, and then you, the next season you can plant something there again and it will have the nutrient contents that is needed. So um, regenerative is really understanding soil and land management um, and making sure that we're not degrading the land that we farm on to the point that at some point it cannot no longer be farmed on. Or if it's still being farmed on, like the, the food that is produced is just not going to be very nutrient dense. Um, so, and this is just really key in terms of understanding um, our health and well being moving forward. Um, in understanding our health epidemic, is that, you know, we're just eating food that is uh, depleted of nutrients. So, um, the regenerative food system, the basis is um, getting our farming operations, our farms back to um, or forward to regenerative farming practices as a baseline and understanding that um, no matter what we do, no matter how we cook, where we shop, et cetera, it's, we're always going to be lacking unless we're using regenerative practices. Um, I mean, that's why the supplement in the drug industry has taken off is because it's trying to replace those nutrients that our body needs that isn't in the foods that we're eating. I um, mean, that's really why you can talk about food as medicine and because and that's why food as medicine is backed by scientific fact is because if we are eating the right foods, we are getting the nutrients that our body needs and illnesses and uh, all these other things, uh, are just that much less likely to occur. So um, regenerative food system, the baseline is soil health. And, um, and then within that, there's a bunch of other components, making it equitable, ensuring that there's access for everybody, taking the environment into uh, consideration. And um, there really is no better uh, thing for the environment than regenerative farming. Um, there's studies out there now um, because part of, regenerative agriculture is ideally you don't till you don't till the soil that you're farming on uh, which is hard and it's more labor intensive it'll require more farmers but every time you break up the soil it releases carbon um, which is obviously an issue in terms of climate change and so when you're planting cover crops and you're not disturbing that soil you're actually putting carbon back into the ground mm -hmm. and so there have been studies done that um, the, the easiest, most affordable way to combat climate change is through not only planting trees, but through regenerative farming practices um, that, and that's really incredible. And that's why I love the model. It's because not only does regenerative farming provide us with the nutrient dense food that we need to thrive, it also is going to actively combat climate change. So that's the basis for a regenerative food system is understanding soil health and soil science and um, conservation of, of land uh, has to be the priority because our farming practices now, whether it's leveling the rainforests or just, um, you know, tilling the soil every single time we plant um, and not putting back, not keeping um, the health of the soil in mind um, is, is a large reason why we are dealing with the climate crisis that we are. Now, you mentioned um, prioritizing food. That's kind of your main goal in, in your, your company, Planted Cuisine. Um, how, what, in what ways do you help to prioritize food? How do you, how do, you do that? 
first just talking about it uh, constantly, um, whether it's with, with friends. Um, I mean, one of the things that I, I, I'm always inviting friends over for dinner, for food, um, and organizing my friend group around food. And, and not just in the sense that, like, come over and, and eat the food that I prepared, but come over, bring some stuff, and let's all cook together. Um, that's been a real central part of, of my life for the last five, six years. Um, so just like in social outside of work, um, it's something that I'm talking to, to people about constantly. And then within, um, within planted cuisine, it was just, it's just been something where I've been looking at food systems, looking at our history with food as a species, as a country, um, and really just kind of like looking at all the different moving parts and how we have arrived at where we are currently and why we have the health epidemics and the food epidemics that we do. And it really is, um, it was kind of the moment that we, um, that we our technology allowed us to, uh, basically it removed us from the kitchen. We didn't have to be in the kitchen anymore. Um, is, is the moment that we really started to see a rise in all, all of these different issues from environmental to health. Um, so when I'm doing dinners, when I am doing education, everything's centered around showcasing um, the fun that in food, um, the deliciousness in food. Um, it's really just, it's, it's highlighting food, not just, you know, it's not I consider myself a chef as, as part of what I do. Um, but it's, I'm not just like putting food on a plate and it's going out to the dining room and, and people are eating it. Everything that I do, there's always interaction. Um, I don't just do dinners to do dinners. I do dinner experiences to really, um, open people's eyes to what food can and should be. And so it's always this conversation of, um, this is how delicious food can be. This is how good it can make you feel. And this is, these are the reasons why it should be a, a, a priority because if you make conscious, healthy food, a priority in your life, all the other things that you're either looking to improve or unlock or, um, you know, just make a shift in are that much easier because food is just that connected to, um, who we are. So, uh, it's just really, it's just that foundational piece. So it's whether it's a social media post or, all the way up to inter interacting with a guest at a dinner experience it's food as a priority is is always where i'm coming from and and any means that i can take any action that i can take to to inspire people um that's that's the motivation okay so what's um at your dinners or different just different events like what's a typical like how do you go about uh i guess helping people make that connection or interact with the, with the meal, with the food? So, so a big part, so the dinner experiences that I do, um, they're pretty elevated. They can, they are usually around six, seven courses. They're plated beautifully. Um, they're some, whether it's a non-alcoholic or alcoholic food pairing people, it's a very immersive experience. And, um, a lot of times what people come up to me afterwards saying is, um, you know, if you were, if you were at my house, I would be eating this way every single day. Um, <laughs> and that was like this, this was, it was part of this, under, it was, this is kind of the reason why I started to understand like this food as a priority. It's that, it's not that, um, people might not want to make that change or might not want to make food a priority. It's just that they don't know how they don't have the tools. They're not equipped. Um, and so I was, I sat with that and there was always this desire for people from people for me to make a cookbook or do a cooking class series. And it, it, that never really was appealing to me because I don't use cookbooks. You know, I grew up knowing how to cook intuitively. Um, I never measure anything in the kitchen. Everything, it turns out a little different each time. Um, and so the cookbook thing wasn't super appealing to me because I've always seen cookbooks as a way of keeping people, um, uh, it, it doesn't help unlock the kitchen for people. You're just following a recipe. Um, and if it doesn't turn out the way you want it to, then you don't know how to fix it. Um, so recipes 
are nice, but they really should ideally be used as inspiration rather than, you know, this is exactly what you're going to make um, because recipes don't allow you to learn how to cook. So I was sitting on that for a while and finally realized that I could do a cooking class series based around actually getting people to be able to cook intuitively. So Mm -hmm. I just recently launched my first cooking class series, which I thought was never going to happen based on like, I don't have that traditional culinary background. I don't have the traditional education background. I didn't feel comfortable. I was, I couldn't figure out how to translate the knowledge that I have to people until I landed on creating a cooking series around training and and educating people on how to just be intuitive in the kitchen. So um, this new cooking class series has been a blast because um, it's just, it's very informal and it's, it's telling people my story and how I learned how to cook intuitively. And then just, we're just talking like concepts and building blocks, fundamental, like the building blocks of flavor and texture and color. And here are all the different ways in which, and the different pieces of knowledge that you need to be able to go into the kitchen, look in your fridge, pull out the five random things that you have in there and cook something up that you didn't like. And that's delicious. Um, and you know, part of the beauty of food and well, part of the beauty of cooking for yourself. And one of the things I like to talk to people about is if you're cooking for yourself or you're, you're doing the cooking yourself and you're not necessarily following a recipe, you're cooking what you want in that moment. Um, you're not at the mercy of whatever the restaurant you're going to might offer or what they're putting in it or the same thing with a recipe. Instead, you're using the ingredients and the produce and whatever else that you're using that you want in the moment, um, which is really critical when we get to the ideal space place of being, which is um, when we're eating really clean, when our systems are clean, um, our bodies actually intuitively know what we need to eat to thrive and to get the nutrients that we, um, our body needs. Um, there's a great book called the Dorito effect that really has the data behind this. Um, and it was, they found this out by studying cows and realizing that like in a massive field, cows are, are, would like lean over a barbed wire fence to get a certain like type of grass. Like, well, why would a cow do that? And it's because their bodies, when they're not being pumped full of grains and other things, like a grass fed cow knows in a field, they're, they just intuitively know what their system needs um, to get all the nutrients it needs. And then it was realized that humans are the same way, but it's just because we're so addicted to certain things that, um, w- we don't have those capabilities at the present, but if we actually cleanse our systems and eat more healthy, um, you know, we'll go to a farmer's market or even a grocery store and we'll just be intuitively drawn to certain foods. And there's an actual reason behind that. So um, knowing that that's kind of like that ultimate goal to get our, our systems to that place, teeing people up by getting them the education to cook intuitively is, is a big part of it. Okay. So is it, it seems pretty um, connected, interactive cooking or intuitive cooking with intuitive eating. I mean, can you, can you have one without the other? Well, certainly. So, I mean, I think the first one is being able to cook intuitively. And again, I mean, when I'm talking about like a clean system that is able to recognize what, we, what you know, your body needs um, is, is really tough in our environment, right? So like for me, like I'm still addicted to certain like I love rice like I know that my body's still addicted to rice for instance um and also you know it's not like we're exposed to the the variety of foods on a daily basis our food our bodies are looking for anyway right like our supermarkets or even our farmers markets are only and have a, a limited number of things um so absolutely the first step is just being able to learn how to cook cook intuitively cook creatively um and that's that's the most important one um and starting to learn some of the, the fundamentals of, of healthy living and cooking and eating in the cook kitchen and, and knowing how to do that in a way that it's ain't a taste good to you. Um, part of, part of like what our bodies are looking for, for instance, with specific nutrients is, is bitter and sour foods. Like, and you know, as Americans, we don't, you know, if we go out to eat and we are served bitter foods, like we're going to give them, 
that restaurant like a bad Yelp review. So <laughs> it's also like introducing people to these foods and you have to be, actually eat, dedicate yourself to eating them enough times where your body becomes accustomed to it again. And then you start to enjoy it. Like something like kimchi or like dandelion greens are things that I never used to like. But once I introduced it to my system enough times, now I crave it um, because our, my body actually needs those. It just didn't know it before based on my eating habits prior to. So um, so it's, it's those concepts and, and just learning how to cook and then diversifying your diet and starting to open your system up. Those are like the, the first two steps I like to talk to people about. Um, like in a cooking class or even, even in a dinner, like when I do these higher end dinners, I include the bitter and the sour. Um, and I just combine it with other things. So it's not an unpleasurable, uh, experience, but you notice that it's there, but you understand why it's there. 